Намираме се в музея, Общински исторически музей на... We are on the premises of the Tsarevo Municipality Museum of History, opened in 2012. The town of Tsarevo is located in southeast Bulgaria and is one of the southernmost settlements on our part of the Black Sea coast. The museum was opened with a degree of urgency to shelter some of the biggest treasures ever found on the territory of the municipality. The gold treasure discovered in one of the richest tumuli from the late Hellenistic age, the second to the first century BC, as well as the silver coin hoard which caused an international sensation. All these discoveries became possible due to the financial support provided by the Horizon Foundation. For us, it was a great joy to see on the central plate of this tiara an inscription specifying the names of the owner of the jewellery and goldsmith. Furthermore, the earring you see here is a sample of the masterpieces of the antique art of jewellery. Besides, there is also a second item, which is hopefully soon to be restored. However, the wealth and pride of the Tsarevu Museum is this exceptional coin hoard consisting of 199 tetradrachms, including 36 coins minted by Mostis, one of the least known but very powerful Thracian kings. This small vessel contained all the coins of the invaluable hoard. Over recent years, our efforts have been focused on studying two archaeological sites. The first one is located near the village of Sina Moritz, and here you see a panorama of this charming place on the bank of the mouth of the river Veleka. The second site is 10 kilometers away, inland from the Stranger Mountains, close to the village of Brodilovo. In 2006, our expedition discovered by chance an extraordinary grave in a tumulus on this hill. In terms of rich inventory, it is comparable to some of the richest graves ever found in Europe and around the world. It turned out to be a woman's grave with a huge amount of gold ornaments. The original items of this treasure are kept in the National Museum of History in Sofia. The following year, once the great euphoria of the expedition members and all our colleagues began to subside, a question arose. Where did this rich Thracian noblewoman live? The first possible place we thought of was this hill, named Golotaniva, and naturally fortified by rocks. Fortunately, it turned out to be the buried woman's home place. In 2012, our efforts were supported by the Ministry of Culture, the Municipality of Tsarevo and the Horizon Foundation. In this place we discovered the ceramic vessel containing 199 tetradrachms. It had been deposited outside the fortified stone wall, presumably on the occasion of some troubled times occurring at the beginning of the first century BC. 
Currently, the whole site is closed for the winter season. Over recent years, we have managed to excavate the tower, the entire western fortified stone wall, and four rooms located in this part, each of them containing an ornamented altar. Most probably, this was a two-story building, and we expect that further in-depth excavations will reveal better preserved parts of it. This location is believed to be one of the most visited on our southern Black Sea coast. No doubt, it is also one of the most beautiful places. Now we are at the mouth of the river Veleka. The second site is 10 kilometers further into the mountains, also at the mouth of the river, and we have been studying it with a team managed by Dejan Dichev. It represents a ruler's fort at Pastich, near the village of Brodilovo. Now we are at the foot of Papia Peak, one of a series of high peaks in the northern part of the Strangia Mountains. From here, you can see the middle part of the mountain range and its highest peak, in Yada, located now on the territory of the Republic of Turkey. The valley of the river Veleka, running to the west, is in the immediate vicinity. The village of Prodilovo is down there and next to it is the site of the Thracian ruler's fort. These are the topographic data of the ruler's domain dated back as late Hellenism. The site dates from late Hellenism and is the Thracian ruler's fort. It was built after 130 BC. It used to be part of the ruler's fort that exercised economic, political and military control over the regions embodied in the possessions of King Mostis. Moreover, these forts also used to have a religious function and were of great importance to the region, and therefore they were located at strategic locations, for example, on roads.
This is also valid for this specific fort, which is located close to the road via Pontica, going alongside the Western Black Sea coast and reaching as far as the ancient city of Byzantium. The fort itself lay on an area of 850 square meters. It was surrounded by a fortified stone wall with an embedded tower. The latter had an internal ground plan measuring 5 by 3.5 meters and was built in the most easily accessible part of the site. Next to the tower there is a quarry that used to fulfill the double function of being a source of war construction material and a natural defense facility a kind of moat meant to prevent invaders and enemies from taking over the fort. The tower was a two-story building, measuring between 10 and 15 meters in height. The fortification wall consists of stone masonry with mud binding and measures from 2.6 to 1.1 meters in width with its thickest part being to the north. Самия дом се вижда едно западане в последните му време, той се превръща в последното му използване, нали, тази последни негови дни. There are indications that over the last years of operation of the ruler's fort, it suffered attacks by enemies. The tower was converted into a smithy, and there we found many billets. It is here that a Romfea, a long sword, was found for the first time on the territory of Bulgaria. We also found a second Romfea in the original smithy. Its forging had been started, but it remained unfinished. Furthermore, we found part of a knife and iron billets stacked in cubes. This is the enclosed forge hearth, and this is where the ashes were disposed of. A large amount of waste material, or slag, was piled in this corner. In the other corner, we found billets ready to be forged and processed further. An amazing coin collection of 20 tetradrachms of extreme importance was poured into this hole and below it. Unfortunately, due to the burning process, some of the coins had their surfaces melted. However, the preserved coins have provided us with very interesting information. It's worth mentioning a particularly valuable coin minted in Athens. We also found bronze coins minted by Sadala and Kotis. The last treasure deposited is dated to 50 to 48 BC. And consists of two Cottis bronze coins, two massive silver bracelets, and a gold gilded silver earring. В самия двор вече в това оградено пространство от 850 квадрата са разположени жилища. The fort covered an area of 850 square meters and sheltered the residential premises. Their back walls were fixed to the fortified stone wall and thus shaped an inner courtyard. This ground plan of the buildings is typical of almost all sites of that age and is considered to have been the most efficient one since the premises were chained and attached to each other. The two-story premises had an almost square ground plan measuring 4.5 by 5 meters. An altar, oriented approximately according to the four points of the compass, was built in the center of the floor of each room and was meant to offer libations and sacrifices to the deities every once in a while. 
On this altar we found some ashes and small bones. Two amphoras were laid down close to the altar. Furthermore, we found some cult objects, small figurines, representing vessels and altars as well as human images. Similarly, until recently, our great-grandparents used to have a home iconostasis where they prayed holding a candle in the morning. This altar reminds us of such a kind of iconostasis. Голямо е количество на луксозна керамика, което показва на богатство на самия дом. Това са Yet we discovered a large amount of luxury ceramics, proving the richness of the fort itself. Тези чаши са много красиво орнаментирани. This includes a fiala or cup with great decoration, as well as many amphoras. These fialas have got beautiful ornaments and scenes with anthropomorphic images of deities, images of Eros as well as erotic scenes. Mm -hmm. This fort provided residence for the ruler and his family as well as for about 20 guardsmen and their families. Guardsmen's wives did the housekeeping, prepared food and knitted clothes. As a general rule, the forts had the double function of ruler's residence and government center for the respective region. At the entrance of this room, we found elements of a metal door and door frames with a coating consisting of engraved spiral ornaments and a layer of white finishing. This was the first time such ornaments had been discovered within the territory of Thrace. Moreover, this was the first time we had discovered ancient grain storage facilities. Nowadays, they have absolutely exact parallels or copies in the region of the Stranger Mountains, which indicate a tradition of more than 2,000 years. The items were designed to reach as high as an adult person's chest, so that they could bend over and rake out the grains. Here we excavated four well-preserved facilities of a total of eight. One of them contained burned millet grains, while two others contained wheat grains. There was a smaller quantity of millet. Take a look. It looks like it was burned yesterday. The burning caused the grains to remain preserved till this day. Last year, we excavated here a coin hoard contained in a vessel, 16 bronze coins dated to the last years of operation of the fort. The coins were minted by Mostis and represent their last issues and highest denominations. They were found partially burned, but were still good enough to be studied and help us with dating the archaeological site to the last years of King Mostis' rule of this region. One of the hypotheses is that the fort was demolished as a result of a series of coups. 
We know for sure that the dynasty of Mostis was followed by another one, the Sapians. Probably, the dynasty change process was not peaceful and the fort was destroyed in such a coup. The coin hoard was flanked by a fragmented ceramic riton in the form of a deer head. This is the second riton we found on the site. Ritons are objects of luxury. They were used by rulers, not by low status people. This find reveals the importance of the fort. In this part, we found the most precious artifacts, and based on them, we may presume that the ruler lived in this part of the fort.